All right, this is it guys. This is the third and final part of the Scratch Platformer tutorial series. And buckle up because we're gonna add some very cool effects to this one and it's gonna be a good time. Let's go. All right, so the first step is gonna be going to your player sprite. And then in your costumes, you're just gonna go ahead and duplicate the left looking one. And we're gonna make this one for when we're jumping, we're gonna have the eye looking up. And one of the viewers suggested this, so if you're watching this, thank you very much. And now we're gonna go into our code and then we're gonna make this work. So go ahead and duplicate your if key up arrow pressed script and then inside that script you're going to put a switch costume to up and we're going to see how this runs and this is really cool so now we can look up when we jump and it is looking good all right so after you do this we're just going to go ahead and hide the levels variable because we don't really need that and then you should have all the costumes here and now we're going to go ahead and add a cool trail effect to our player and i know that a lot of platformers on scratch have these and they're pretty cool so i'm going to teach you how to build one so you're just going to do a one green flag clicked and then a forever loop and then inside that forever loop you're going to say create clone of myself and we're going to go ahead and start off by waiting i think 0.1 seconds just like that and that is very good so now that you have that, drag it in, because we don't want to forever be repeating creating clones, so that would break our game, it would be not a good time. So we're going to have a little delay. So on the top of that script, you're going to say show, and then go to back layer. And then we're going to go ahead and set our ghost effect to zero, and then I'm going to need to correct this in a bit. We're just having it up to 100 for now, but set that one to zero. And then when I start as a clone, we're going to repeat this 10 times, and then we are going to change our ghost effect by 10. And this is gonna make our trail piece fade away, I guess. And then after you do this, you can go ahead and drag in a delete this clone block to keep our game running nice and smooth. And honestly, that's looking a little bit choppy, so we're just gonna make a few adjustments to make this run smoother and look cleaner. So we're gonna continue testing this out. So we're gonna change the delay from 0.1 second to 0.05 seconds. We're gonna repeat 20 and we're gonna change our ghost effect by five. And there, that is looking a lot better. So I much prefer the way that looks to how it did before this. So we're just gonna run through the levels for a bit to see how it looks in our game. And it's looking really clean, I like it. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do here is we're going to add a sun to our background because I know some of you are requesting some more detailed art. So we're just gonna do that to make our game look a little bit more finished. And once again, my goal for this series is not to show you how to make a platformer game that you can make and call it good. I'm showing you how to make the engine for the platformer game so you can then make it your own and add however many features you want. And if you do that, please link your Scratch projects down in the comments and I will check them out and I will give you feedback on them. And I'd love to see what you guys add to this engine. So after you do that, um, we just have our sun there. And then now, I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make some cool particle effects. I know that some platformers, most of the generic ones, have this in their projects. And it's just gonna be particles that kind of float about the screen as you progress through the game. And while we're here, I just wanna to touch on something. So I know a lot of people will be hating on generic platformers and saying they like, they're boring, they ruin scratch, yada yada. I don't see a problem with them. Like, if you're having fun making the project and you like how it looks, cool. Like, I have no problem with it. I think they're kind of cool, mainly because it gives me, I guess, nostalgia and flashbacks to 2020 when we were in quarantine I was playing these games like crazy like it was a good time and I mean yeah so I don't know you probably have your own opinion on it but that's just my take so after you draw that little particle there we are going to just set up the parameters for it so it when we have them spawn in we're gonna set our value we're gonna find our bottom of our y value and then the top of our y value here and then our bottom one is going to be, or no, our top one is going to be 168. And then we're gonna locate our top one, or our bottom one, my mistake. 
we're gonna locate our bottom one and then we're gonna input that into our pick random block and it's looking like it's going to be negative 172 so just add that into your thing and then snap on a forever loop and then we're gonna say go to front layer on the top of that and make sure you go ahead and hide this right and then inside your forever loop you're going to create a clone of myself and then we're gonna wait I think probably not 0.1 we'll set it to 0.1 for now but we're probably gonna change it to something like 0.5 in the future because that's just gonna spawn in a little bit too rapidly so yeah we're just gonna update that real quick and then underneath your when I start as a clone block we're going to change y by neg we're gonna change x by negative 5 and then we're gonna write a quick script to repeat this until we're all the way on our left edge of the screen and that's gonna look really nice and yeah so drag in a repeat until block and then you're gonna go ahead and snap on a less than operator and we're going to say negative 250 and then inside the left of that little equation we're gonna say X position and then after that we're gonna say delete this clone very nice and then don't forget to put a show block underneath your when I start as a clone this is very important it's gonna allow it to work and now we can run our game and see that it's looking pretty good I'd say we're pretty much done with it. It's looking very polished and nice, and it's looking like it's a good starting point for y'all to add some very cool features, and once again, I can't wait to see what y'all come up with to add to this engine. We're just going to navigate through the levels real quick, and we're going to see what we want to add next. So yeah, something that was bothering me from the last tutorial was when I made the little thing to go to the next level, you probably noticed this, but when you got to the right side, you weren't quite touching the edge, you kind of just snapped there once you got close enough. So we're going to go ahead and put our blue rectangle thing in the middle of the screen. And then go ahead and do your trick of drawing the transparent triangle, not sure what am I saying, draw the transparent rectangle all the way over it. And then that'll allow it to bypass the scratch boundary hack that is on all scratch projects to prevent your sprites from going off stage. And then go ahead and start your game and that's looking a lot better because now you'll go actually onto the edge instead of just near the edge when it flips to the new level. There we go, we can just navigate through the levels a bit more to see how we're liking things so far. And yeah, it's looking very nice. Yep, yep, pretty cool, pretty cool. And so now there's also something that people were leaving comments about that I thought I should address in this. They said that you can't collide with the bottom of a platform. So if you have a platform like this that I just drew on the screen, you will just bump into the, you won't bump into the bottom, you'll kind of glitch through, you see that? But I honestly like this feature because I know that a lot of games, some, there's some Mario platforms that have this, maybe in, maybe like Sonic 3 or something they have this. I like it, how you can land on the top of the platform, but you can also jump through the bottom, adds a cool dynamic feature. And yeah, so that's the kind of platforms I envisioned for this game. And I think they're pretty cool. It's pretty fun to be able to just go through the bottom of it. And you can probably come up with some cool creative level designs for this. And yeah. And anyways, that is it for this tutorial. And this series is now officially wrapped up. And I'll be coming out with more content very soon. And yeah, stay tuned for that and leave a comment, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and have a nice day. Love you, bye.